हेलो वेलकम टू लेसन सिक्स ऑन द टॉपिक नंबर सिस्टम इफ यू रिमेंबर इन लेसन फाइव वी वेर डिस्कसिंग द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ रिमेंडर्स एंड आई वॉज शेयरिंग विद यू एज टू हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू यूज दीज प्रॉपर्टीज वेर इज वेर इज इट दैट दीज प्रॉपर्टीज आर गोइंग टू बी यूज ओके लेट मी गिव यू टू एग्जाम्पल्स द फर्स्ट इज suppose we are finding out the remainder when 35 is divided by 7 now we all know that when 35 is divided by 7 the remainder is going to be zero okay now the question is what is the remainder when 35 into 3 is divided by 7 now when 35 into 3 is divided by 7 then please appreciate as we discussed in the last lecture lesson it is 35 by 7 into 3 by 7 i'll share something interesting with all of you here so 35 divided by 7 the remainder is 0 now whatever may be the remainder of the second part whatever may be the remainder of the second part since it is going to get multiplied with zero the overall remainder is going to be zero that means what i am actually telling you is if a number is able to divide a multiple it is also able to divide all multiples of the first multiple that means what i am actually telling is if 35 into a b c d e is divided by 7 i need not know what is the remainder i need not know what is the remainder of a b c d e when divided by 7 because it is going to finally get multiplied with 0 giving the overall remainder as 0 where is this going to be used when we come to the next lesson and we talk about uh, the concept of lcm there we will be using this that if a number divides its lcm then it is also going to divide any multiple of its lcm all right i hope this makes sense to you now one very interesting uh, thought <clears throat> sometimes students say that this is a wrong thing to do you cannot do this and when i ask them what what could be the reason they say that sir look the problem was 35 divided by 7 you have actually changed it to the problem was 35 into 3 divided by 7 i'm sorry you have converted it into 35 into 3 divided by 7 square so you have changed the problem and therefore this is not acceptable this is wrong this is absolutely right please listen carefully this would have been a wrong thought had our intention been to calculate the value of 35 into 3 divided by 7 i repeat had our intention been to calculate the value of 35 into 3 when divided by 7 then this is wrong mathematically but please appreciate kindly acknowledge when you are finding out the remainder remainder gives this opportunity to find out the remainder for each part and then use the mathematical sign okay so that that is the first example of where we are going to use this now let me give you another example <clears throat> so i'm going to give you another example present another example and this is uh, students this is a very good question so listen carefully n is the smallest n is the smallest three digit number uh, which gives a remainder of 5 when divided by 7 n is the smallest three digit number n is the smallest three digit number which gives a remainder of 5 when divided by 7 find 
the remainder when n to the power 5 is divided by 7 that is the question okay find the remainder when n to the power n to the power 5 is divided by 7 now please uh, appreciate there are different ways that students approach a question like this the first way a student starts to think what is the smallest three digit number that has got this property and it's not very difficult to figure out the smallest three digit number which has this property is a multiple is a multiple of 7 plus 5 okay a multiple of 7 closes to 100 and you add it to 5 to make it a three digit number because you are talking about the smallest three digit number so what is a multiple of 7 a multiple of 7 closes to 100 is 98 and 98 plus 5 is 103 so n happens to be 103 what is the first approach the first approach is 103 into 103 into 103 into 103 into 103 divided by 7 we try to find out the remainder for this expression I am not going to do this here definitely not required but what is to be appreciated is if a student starts to get into this thought he or she is definitely going to spend a lot of time so this approach is not desired okay what is the second approach the second approach is somebody understands that instead of working with the number per se remember the rules instead of working with the number per se let's work with the remainder itself so what is the remainder the remainder is 5 so 5 into 5 into 5 into 5 into 5 when divided by 7 this is the second approach okay so what is uh, what is 5 to the power 5 5 to the power 5 is 3 1 2 5 so let's actually do this so 3 1 2 5 divided by 7 7 4 times 28 and then 32 7 4 times 28 and then 45 7 6 times 42 the remainder is 3 so what is the answer to your question the answer to your question is the remainder will be 3 this is the answer the important question to be asked is is this the right approach the answer is even this is not even this is not the desired approach you would be thinking what is the what is the challenge with this approach the approach is not mathematically incorrect even this approach for that matter is not mathematically incorrect the question is how much time are you willing to spend on doing a question so uh, what is the challenge the challenge is the question right now was n to the power 5 what if the question would have been n to the power 8 or n to the power 9 would you have first found what is 5 to the power 8 5 to the power 9 and then you would have done this question and that is the challenge with the second approach so what is the correct way uh, let me let me use some space so what is the correct way of uh, doing a question like this now look at this so it is 5 into 5 into 5 into 5 into 5 when divided by 7 now what I am going to do I am going to remember what we have learnt and break down this expression into smaller values how so 5 into 5 is 25 divided by 7 I have another 25 divided by 7 and I have a 5 divided by 7 what is the remainder when 25 is divided by 7? The remainder is 4. What is the remainder when this 25 is divided by 7? The remainder is 4. Now I will not get into the third part and that is the beauty. I will not get in here. What I will do? I will first solve this part. So what is the remainder? The remainder is 16. Can the remainder can the remainder be more than the divisor? No. So what we will do? Divide it again. So what is the remainder? The remainder is 2. Have I used all the 5's? No. I still have the last 5. What is the sign in between? Multiplication. So what is 
what is my remainder coming out to be? My remainder is coming out to be 10. Right? Can the remainder be more than the divisor? No, the remainder cannot be more than the divisor. So what is my final remainder? My final remainder is going to be 3. So, as I have been telling you from the beginning of uh, uh, this course where we are learning quantitative aptitude, it is very important to not only know the concepts and the rules, but equally important to understand where it is going to be applied. The application and its practice is going to be as crucial to your performance in an examination as the understanding part, understanding of that concept is. Um, in the next lesson, we will first talk about how we find out the number of factors of a number and then proceed from there. Thank you.